Day number seven, Picnic Table Talk. Andrew Capone from Horse Racing Nation with my guest today, Kevin Strom. Kevin, we're in the backyard here, underneath the trees. Fans are trickling in. A nice Friday card, pretty busy today. We got some pretty bad rain yesterday. Two separate showers. Um, we got came off the turf after the, uh, about 30 seconds before the load of the gate. Um, what were your thoughts on that, that, how they handled that sequence yesterday? So it's not great. Um, if you're gonna take it, they obviously knew well ahead of time that the rain had impacted the turf enough to be able to take races off. When they wait until 30 seconds to post, especially in race one when the pick five pool is already filled up with tickets and people have punched them and they cancel it while they're loading the horses in, that doesn't give folks enough time to cancel their uh, their tickets and, and be able to make adjustments. So I, I really don't like when they do that. Um, it came out later on after, after Naira dealt with a little bit of backlash that they were going to award all for race three, which is one of the races that had come off the turf. Um, so when a race comes off the turf mid-sequence in uh, pick four or pick five, they'll award all uh, here at Naira. Um, so that can't come out after the fact, but it's just, you like to see a little bit more professionalism about the way they're treating their handicappers and gamblers. Yeah, I was a little disappointed with that, um, especially paper ticket players here at the track in the backyard. Couldn't cancel tickets, so that wasn't the greatest thing. But uh, we got a nice card today, uh, cap uh, capping off with the Lake George, going one mile on the inner turf. That inner turf course is playing a little closing so far this week, huh? Sure is. So you've seen uh, a couple non-graded, a couple graded stakes there, uh, play to the closers, uh, even in the sprint. So even in the five and a half, you know, remember Big Invasion, who I think was just much the best, uh, Yarrow had gotten up. Uh, both under Joel Rosario. Uh, so I, I think it is leaning towards closures right now, but you know as well as I do this in Saratoga, and that track, or that, that turf bias can, can flip at any moment. So let's take a look at this race. We have a pretty interesting uh, race here, deep race to say the least. Um, some some horses that I'm interested in. Let's start off with the Safi Joseph horses. He's got a pair in here, uh, the one and the seven. Uh, one seems to be the pace of the pace of the pace here. It's going to be way out in front, in my opinion. Um, did you take a look at this race? What did you, would you think of the uh, Safi Joseph's to start? Yeah, so I did. So that one, uh, unfortunately, scratched. Oh, it did. I missed uh, the scratch already. Sorry. So uh, that is going to be a big pace factor. You know, I was planning on that kind of pushing the pace a little wow. bit. Um, I know Safi was kind of hoping that it would set the tone for the seven a little bit more. Um, you know, you get Javier in the seven. Javier's a great value turf rider here at Saratoga. Um, hasn't been getting too many mounts, so we hope to see that change. Uh, you know, but the guy gets priced his home. He knows how to ride the turf, very experienced uh, jockey. Um, so if you like the seven, by no means am I going to talk you off of it. Uh, it's a great horse. Uh, Sassy, you know, ships up here from Florida most of the time. So they have a plan. They clearly think highly of the horse. So, yeah, uh, the seven, seven looks strong. And what about the pair of Chad Browns? So I think uh, the Chad Browns, you know, they're going to be over bet this race. Uh, they usually are here up at Saratoga, but especially in a, in a turf feature like this, a great stakes. Um, I think this is a good opportunity to play against both of them. So this race, as we were talking about yesterday, this is another three-year-old race. Uh, these horses will not be running with Lasix uh, today. So this is a race that is, any horses that ran with Lasix previously, you're not allowed to use that in order to enter a, uh, a horse in this race here. Um, and these Chads just, they have not taken the necessary step forward for me as three-year-olds. Um, with three-year-olds, two-year-olds, and three-year-olds, I like to see a progressive consistent improvements each time out and I just don't see it on this five and six here you know Irad and Pratt are going to be on them they're going to take a lot of money but I do think that there this is a good opportunity to play against them and get a price in the late here so talking about that late pick five uh what's your what are you looking for here in this sequence are you going to single a horse or are you going to go a little wider yeah so actually right here in the Lake George uh we're going to be singling the eight um with Joel Rosario up, that's Christophe Clement. Uh, Joel is lights out on this inner turf right now. He's been riding the closures extremely well. If you look at the run lines of this horse, uh, consistently improving each out, not running on Lasix. This is the kind of, of trajectory I like to see in, in figures for a horse, especially a three-year-old, consistently improving. Ran a, a top first race as a three-year-old, and I think this horse is ready to fire today. Also, take a look at the nine horse uh, with Dylan Davis up. Dylan's been uh, sneaky good at getting value home already this meet. Uh, not so much in the turf, but let's see if that can change today. Just nine closed uh, into a very slow pace last time and, and was just a much the best horse. Uh, one of the horses in that race that has already come back to, to validate that figure here at Saratoga. So I think the nine is a good play. The nine is coming off of LASIK, so that worries me a little bit. Uh, but I am going to single the eight here uh, with Joel Rosario up, and then I'll have a little safer ticket to the nine. So the horse you're talking about was Kinesi, correct? Yes. That, that nine? Yeah. So the nine I was was well, I was interested in. Um, Dylan seems like he's one of those riders, uh, sort of a... a, a uh, almost Kendrick Carmouche type, where he'll try to steal, them, steal it from them. 
where if they go really slow all the way around, we get like 113. He's one of those guys who will just make that first move and see if they can catch him. I think this horse is going to be closing from pretty deep. Um, turf should have a little bit of a, a little bit of cutting it after that rain yesterday. So it should be a good opportunity here to drive some value. Eight to one in the morning line, I think you're going to get all of that plus some. I think it'll be maybe a little uh, 13 to 15 to one area. Um, going back to those two Chad Brown horses, I think they're going to be so short. Um, both are coming off LASIK, so that should be interesting. The one I would note about is the uh, number five horse, uh, Dulce Zell, um, was running with the bias at last time out at Churchill. We've spoken about the Churchill turf bias before. Um, wasn't that Edgewood going 1 1 on the turf course there? That turf course has had a number of issues. Uh, throughout this entire year, but uh, that, that horse was going with the bias. So I'm interested to see what happens here. Um, I think both those chads are going to be very, very short. I think there's good opportunity on this nine here um, for Robbie Falcone's part. And you know, that scratch of the one, I, I, sorry I didn't see it early, but that's sort of, uh, that's sort of going to mess up the pace here. Um, any thoughts before we wrap up here on the four Koala Princess? So Koala Princess, that, we were at Kentucky Down um, that weekend where it, it raced. And, you know, Joel saw the bias. I don't know if you guys remember, but at Kentucky Downs towards the end of the meet, there was a massive rail bias just because of the sheer number of races that were running the turf and people were kind of staying off of the rail. The rail was the only part really that had good grass left on it. So Koala Princess snuck up the rail and got a nice rail ride from Joel. Um, you know, Joel decided to choose that horse in the Breeders' Cup instead of Pizza Bianca, and we all know how that went. Um, so seeing him also not choose it here, a uh, little worrying to me. Well, Princess, they clearly think highly of it. Um, I think it's a great horse. You know, Trevor's had a little bit of a little bit of bad luck here to start. He's winless so far this meet, so it'll be interesting to see if he can get a super talented mount home in this race. Um, nine to two, I think, is the morning line. Seems fair to me. It might drift a little bit because Trevor's up. You might get six, seven to one on it. So keep your eye on it. Maybe use underneath. Uh, fill out exactas and trifectas. It's a talented horse. I just don't think it's uh, it's going to be. It's, it's up against it in this in this trap. I mean, I think it's an extremely talented horse. Coming off 250, 59 days, that was quite a bit. And I really don't like when they don't put that many works. I, I would like to see a little more work, say, especially work up here in this horse. So, you know, they, they worked with it down to Farrell. I would love to see something here. Um, get it on the turf here, maybe get Trevor up in it. Uh, but good opportunity here in this race. Lake George going one mile, <coughs> going one mile on the inner turf. Um, race number nine, post time, 5.39 p.m. You can follow us every day here at Picnic Table Talk. Also, Saratoga Morning Report. Each morning about 9.30, 10 a.m., we interview backstretch workers, trainers, jockeys, and agents, and all those that keep this racing every single day. Thanks and good luck today.